negative exponents. This video will help you understand negative exponents and simplify expressions that contain negative exponents. Understanding negative exponents. To understand negative exponents, you will need to remember two previous concepts. First concept here is the quotient rule. And that is any time we're dividing uh, factors that have the same base. Here I have x to the a power divided by x to the b power. So if we have the same base, remember when we're dividing, we actually subtract those exponents. So that would be x to the a minus b. The other concept we're going to have to remember is when we were simplifying fractions. So if I take a look over here at this fraction, 2 sixths. One way to simplify this is to factor it out and then divide out the common factors, and that's what I've done here. So I take this top, the top here, 2 is already factored, so that remains 2. 6, however, down here, I'm going to go ahead and factor that as 2 times 3. Once I have it factored, now I can divide a common factor of 2 out of the numerator and denominator. And when I divide that common factor of 2 out, I'm left with the simplified fraction, 1 third. Now that we've got these two concepts refreshed, let's go ahead now and take a look at some negative exponents. First, let's take a look at this problem, x squared over 5 using the quotient rule. So if I had x squared over 5 here and I used the quotient rule, all I would do is subtract these exponents. And I'd say 2 minus 5. That would give me now an exponent of negative 3. Now let's go ahead and simplify this the way we would as if we were simplifying a fraction. And I think this will tell us now what this x to the negative third power actually is. So if I take x squared over x to the fifth and go ahead and factor this out in the numerator, I'm going to have x multiplied, or two factors of x multiplied. In the denominator, I'm going to have five of these factors of x multiplied. Now if I go through and divide out the common factors, x with x and another x with another x, I'm left with 1 in the numerator now and x to the third power in the denominator. Now I have simplified both of these problems appropriately using my previously learned rules. So it looks like x to the negative third and x to the 1 sorry, and 1 over x to the third have to be equivalent or equal, and they are. And that's what happens when we get a negative exponent. Every time we get a negative exponent here, we're going to end up with a reciprocal. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this formal definition. If a is a real number other than 0 and n is an integer, then a negative exponent is going to give us a reciprocal. And so here is the actual formal definition of this thing. If I have some number a, as long as that's any, other, any number but 0, remember with 0 with this, everything kind of blows up or gets funny, so we don't want to have that. We don't want to end up with 0 over here in the denominator on the right. So we can't have a be 0, and then n has to be any integer. So remember, any positive or negative number that goes by an increment of 1, as long as we have that, all we're going to do is end up when we have a negative exponent, all we're going to do is take the reciprocal 1 over a to the positive nth power. Simplifying expressions that contain negative exponents. Similar to always writing a fraction in simplest form, we almost always rewrite expressions to remove negative exponents. Now let's take a look at some examples that will help you understand how to remove exponents in an expression. Example 1, we're asked to simplify this 2 to the negative third power. So what I want to do is kind of get rid of that negative exponent and then write this in simplest form. So let's see, first thing I would do as I would say, okay, let's get rid of that negative exponent. Remember to get rid of a negative exponent, all I have to do is write the reciprocal here. So this is going to be 1 over 2 to the third power. Now that I've got it written without a negative exponent, I can go ahead now and evaluate that 2 to the third power. So this is actually 1 over, when I take 2 to the third power, I'll get 8. So that expression right there simplifies down to 1 eighth. Example 2, I have 3x to the negative second power. Now we need to be careful here because this 3 is not getting taken to that negative second power, just the x. So if I was to rewrite this, I'll come down here on this next line, only the x is the thing that needs to move down in the denominator. So this fraction would look like this. 3 is going to stay in the numerator. Denominator, I'm going to have x squared. And I can't simplify that x squared anymore, so that's kind of my final simplified answer there. All right, example 3. Two negative exponents going on here. I'm going to go ahead and write each of these without a negative exponent. So first I'll take this 2 to the negative second power. That's really going to be this, 1 over 2 to the second power. Now 3 to the negative first power is really going to be just 1 over 3. 
I could write the first power, but 3 to the first power, it's easier to understand if I just write it as 3. Okay, I still need to simplify this expression. So the first thing I would do is square that 2. So this is really giving me 1 fourth plus 1 third. I can still simplify this. I would need to add these fractions together. First, I'd get a common denominator of 12. With 1 fourth, my missing multiplier was 3, so I'd multiply the top by 3. That would give me 3 twelfths. With 1 third, my missing multiplier was 4, so that would give me 4 twelfths. When I went ahead and added these together, my final simplified answer then would be 7 twelfths. Example 4. Negative 3 taken to the negative second power. Notice both the 3 and the negative sign are getting taken to the negative second power here. So the first thing I would do is get rid of this negative exponent by writing the reciprocal. So it would really be this, 1 over negative 3 to the second power. I'd want to keep those parentheses when I rewrote this because I need to take both the 3 and the negative sign to the second power. So now when I take negative 3 to the second power, that's actually going to give me a positive 9. So I'm left with my simplified form here is going to be the fraction 1 ninth. Now it's time to check your understanding of simplifying an expression with a negative exponent. Go ahead and pause your video player and answer these practice questions. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. Okay, practice question one. We have three to the negative second power. First, I remove the negative exponent. One over three squared. Then I would go ahead and square the three to give me one ninth. Question two, just that y is getting taken to the negative third power. So it would be four in the numerator and y to the third in the denominator. There's really nothing more to simplify there, so that's my final simplified answer. Question three, two things taken to the negative exponent. See that first one then would become one half. The second one there would become one third. And now I would have to add these two fractions together. So finding a common denominator, that would be six. One half, the missing multiplier was three, so that would give me three six. One third, the missing multiplier was two, so that would give me two six. And then 3, 6 plus 2, 6 will give me a final simplified answer of 5, 6. Question 4, negative 2 now taken to the negative third power. First, let's get rid of that negative exponent. So this is going to be 1 over negative 2, in parentheses, taken to the third power. Now I'm going to go ahead and take negative 2 to the third power. Well, negative 2 times negative 2 would give me positive 4. Positive 4 times another negative 2 would give me negative 8. So this would be 1 over negative 8, or you could write the negative out front. So now let's take a look at this definition of negative exponents again, but now let's look at it in the context of a fraction. So if a is a real number other than 0, and n again is some sort of an integer, then a negative exponent gives us a reciprocal in a fraction as well. So notice I've written this first one in a fraction. If I have this fraction where I have this negative exponent in the numerator, when I go to remove this negative exponent now, that takes that factor now down to the denominator. And the same thing vice versa. If I have over here a negative exponent in the denominator, when I go to remove this negative exponent, it's going to move that factor then to the numerator of the fraction. Now let's take a look at some examples that will help you understand how to remove negative exponents when they're in a fraction. Example 5. We're asked to simplify this, and that means we need to remove the negative exponents. Notice my negative exponent is in the denominator, so all I need to do to get rid of this negative exponent now is move it to the numerator. So it's going to look like this then. I'll have x squared in the numerator. I had a 1 there before, but 1 times x squared is just going to simply give me x squared. And now when I removed it or moved it, I would have a 1 left in the denominator. Now x squared over 1, that can simplify just to x squared. Okay, example six. I have my negative exponent here in the numerator, so we basically need to bring this factor now down to the denominator. So it'll look like this. Uh, in the numerator now, when I remove it, I'll be left with a one. Now when I move it to the bottom, I would have this, two x now to the positive third power. Okay, question seven. My negative exponent is in the denominator. Give myself a little more room here. Let's work from the bottom. So I know I'm going to have a fraction after I get done moving this. I'm taking this negative 3, this y to the negative third now, and moving it to the numerator. So here's what I have left. I have the original y times now this y to the third power. Since I've now moved it to the numerator, 
That exponent now is positive. In the denominator, I just have 1. Well, there's some more simplifying to do here. y to the first power times y to the third power is going to give me y to the fourth power in the numerator over 1. And then anything over 1 is just that thing. So I would simplify this then to y to the fourth power. All right, example 8. Got a couple negatives going on in here, but only one negative exponent. And so what this negative exponent tells me to do is take the reciprocal now of everything in this parentheses. So to remove that negative exponent, I would have to go ahead and flip or take the reciprocal of this fraction in there. That was negative 3 fifths, so now it's going to become positive, or sorry, 5 over negative 3. Notice it didn't affect the negative on the 3. But what that did for me when I flipped that now is it removed the negative exponent on that 2. Now that I've removed the negative exponent, I could go ahead and evaluate this fraction, 5 over negative 3 to the second power, by squaring each of these things. 5 to the second power would give me 25. Negative 3 to the second power, notice the negative would be included. So I'd have negative 3 times negative 3, or a positive 9. Depending on your instructor, either a fraction in this improper form would be OK. If they wanted you to, you might have to simplify that down to a, a mixed number. Now it's time to check your understanding of removing negative exponents in a fraction. Pause your video player and answer these practice questions. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. Okay, question five. Well, I just have this one negative exponent to remove, y to the negative third. So all we gotta do is take that y to the negative third and bring it down to the denominator. So let's see, when I do that, there'll be a one left in the numerator. And now in the denominator, I have y to the third times 1, which is really just y to the third. All right, question 6. Just one negative exponent here. I need to take this x to the negative second now, bring it down to the denominator. So here's what that would look like. I'd have a 1 now left in the numerator. Then I'd have x to the fourth times x to the second. Well, 4x is multiplied together, and then two more x's multiplied together would give me all together six of those x's multiplied together in the denominator. Question seven, again, just this negative x to the negative second needs to kind of move down there. So let's see, so I'd have two, the x to this negative second is gonna to go to the denominator, then I'd have four x to the third times now x to the second. So let's keep simplifying here. So 2 fourths, I'll leave that alone. I'll get to that in a second. We do need to simplify that. And then x to the third times x to the second would give me x to the fifth. Now let's go ahead and simplify that 2 fourths. That would actually be 1 over 2x to the fifth power. Question 8. Oh, I have a lot of negative exponents going on here. And it wouldn't matter which one I dealt with first. I think we're used to starting in the parentheses and simplifying things there first. So I'll go ahead and do it that way. But we could have started with this negative exponent on the outside. Either way, we'd ended up with, with the same answer. So I'll start by taking this x to the negative third now and moving it to the denominator. So let's see what would I have. I've not dealt with this one yet, so I'll leave that there. See, in the numerator, then I would just have 2. In the denominator, I'd have 3x now to the positive third. All right, now let's get rid of this negative exponent on the outside here. Well, to get rid of this negative exponent, I'm going to need to take the reciprocal of what's inside this set of parentheses. So I would have 3x to the third and 2 in the denominator. Now all that has done is gotten rid of my negative exponent. I still have now an exponent of 2. Now I would have to go through and take every one of these factors to the second power. So I would need to take 3 to the second power. Well, 3 to the second power is 9. Then I would need to take x to the third to the second power. This is a power to a power rule. So I would want to multiply those together. So that would give me x to the sixth. Now in the denominator, I'd also want to take that 2 to the second power, which would give me 4. And there's my final simplified answer. Now let's go ahead and practice some more. I've given you some that are a little bit more challenging. But go ahead and pause your video player and work these practice questions. And when you're done, hit play to see how you did. Okay, question nine, two sets of negative exponents there. And again, since I started in the parentheses last time, that's where I'll start this time. So I'm gonna start with that negative two in the parentheses. So when I rewrite this, I'll have a to the third, that would be in the numerator. Now that b to the negative second, that needs to go in the denominator. And I still now have to deal with this negative three on the outside. 
Okay, now let's deal with a negative on that negative 3. That means I have to take the reciprocal of this fraction on the inside. So then I'd have b squared over a to the third, all now to the positive third power. So now my final step now is to take each of these factors to the third power. And so both cases, this is a power to a power. So b to the second then raised to the third, we're going to multiply that. That's going to give me b to the sixth power. And now a to the third raised to the third power, that's going to give me a to the ninth power. So there's my final simplified answer for that one. Okay, question 10. I have a couple negative exponents to deal with. This x to the negative second is going to need to go down in the denominator. And this y to the negative third now is going to have to come and move up to the numerator. So let's take a look. I'll deal with this 5 tenths last. So I'm just going to keep writing that. Even though that can be simplified, I'll deal with that in a second. So let's see. In the numerator now, I have this original y to the fourth. And now I'm going to be multiplying it times this y to the third that I've come, that's come up from the denominator. And let's see. In the denominator now, I have the original x that was there. Now times that x to the negative second, which has now come down to the denominator as x to the positive second. All right, now let's go ahead and simplify this stuff out. Now let's deal with that 5 tenths. If I simplify the fraction 5 tenths, that's going to give me 1 half. Now let's take a look. y to the 4th times y to the 3rd is going to give me y to the 7th. And then x times x squared is going to give me x to the 3rd. And so there's my final simplified form of that one. Question 11, uh, three negative exponents to deal with. Let's start with these negative uh, exponents on the inside. So p to the negative fourth is going to the denominator. p to the negative third is going up to the numerator. So let's rewrite this. So 5 is going to stay where it is. And now I have p to the third up here, and then a positive p to the fourth down there. Now let's deal with a negative exponent out here, outside of my fraction here. That's going to take the reciprocal of this fraction. So now I have p to the fourth over 5p to the third. And that now is all being taken to the positive second exponent. All right, one more step, which is now to square each of these factors. Again, power to a power. So p to the fourth raised to the second power is going to give me p to the eighth. Uh, 5 to the second power would give me 25. And then finally, p to the third power raised to the second power would give me p to the sixth for my final simplified answer.